So for me, BioArts is both an experimental and a speculative field that opens a space for thinking about the force of life living. Speculative in the sense that it does not bring about solutions, but raises problems, and experimental in the sense that it often presents these problems in the form of alternative futures. So I came to BioArt asking if, asking if artistic exploration of biotechnology could open up a space for new subjectivities, for new forms of life to emerge. Not utilitarian forms, but forms of enjoyment, forms that hold the potential to enliven our social relations. So my aim is not to come up with a clear definition of what life is, but rather to speculate on life, that is to extract, in the sense of an abstraction, life's operational form in order to facilitate the integration of that operational form or form of process into <coughs> contemporary practices. So right now what I'm looking at is the integration of biotechnology and architectural and spatial practices. Yeah. So it's kind of already, it's not necessarily criticizing or engaging critically with the production of biotechnology itself, but maybe its abstraction and insertion in other fields of practice. So recent acceleration of technical performances has brought life to the fore. Biofuels, bioweapons, biomaterials, biodiversity, biomorphism, biomimesis, bioart, bioarchitecture, name your own biological uh, prefer preference. In addition, the proliferation of biotechnology has reconfigured our relationship to it. Life is no longer a phenomenon to observe and understand, but a series of mechanisms to reconfigure and transform. For Henri Atlan, biology, biologist and professor of biophysics, Biology passed from a science of observation to a biotechnology. It is now able, like physics and chemistry, to produce artificial objects, machines of all kinds, and synthetic products. That is to say, biology is for him found in the reality of artifacts, in the art of making life. The integration of the art of making life in contemporary practices implicitly resonates with the possibilities of enlivening the world. The claim is simple, by making things biological, life will proliferate. Ingrained in the cracks of this claim is the idea that biological materiality carries life's operational form. Accordingly, contemporary biotechnology raises the question as whether a literal integration of, bio of biology inevitably enlivens the world, as whether life can give rise to life. In other words, for me, contemporary biotechnology generates a biologization of life. It is this exact process that I wish to criticize. Literal insertion of biological materials foregrounds an understanding of life as the carrier of its own capacity to enliven the world. Often ingrained in an engineering paradigm, which finds its point of culmination in the field of synthetic biology, whose aim is to engineer life, biological life revives a substantialist conception of life, one based on the assumption that life is found in the physical corporeality of matter. In order to resist a phantasmatic view of a biological, all too biological world, I wish to interrogate techniques that bring to life without blessing of bio a biologization of life. Instead of asking how to make things biological, I wish to investigate life's mode of existence, one that is not based on its biological identity. My aim is to find a kind of a biological identity. In this perspective, I wish to ask how is it possible to simultaneously resist and criticize the proliferation of biotechnology and the biologization of life it generates, while facilitating the emergence of new ways of life, of new modes of living. My project therefore seeks to apprehend the stream of life independently of the creative forms it passes through. Commonly understood at this state diametrically opposed to death, Life induces a relation of resistance to the irre irreversible cessation of vital functions and operations. Even if this conception is based on a dialectical opposition, it nevertheless foregrounds life's operational form, its capacity of resistance. Resistance is not the act of resisting death, but to resist as a political project of expression to live. What is at stake is that through the affirmation of the impossibility of not dying, Techniques that bring to life aim at reinventing a concept of life based on the force of life living. Techniques that bring to life seeks modes of attachment to life as a whole. The whole is for me crucial as biotechnology has not only brought a biologization of life, the specialization of sciences themselves have facilitated the segmentation of life. Molecular biology, tissue culture, genetics, etc. Attaching ourselves to life therefore implies the rediscovery of life as a whole. 
It is exactly at this point that I think art is extremely powerful. Art, not necessarily understood through the artifacts or concept it produces, but through its aesthetics, through its sensuous reality. According to French philosopher Gilbert Simondon, and I quote, aesthetic intention does not create or should not create a specialized field, which is the one of art. Art, in fact, develops itself inside a field and owns an implicit internal finality. It keeps the transductive unity of a field of reality which tends to separate as it gets specialized. Art is a deep reaction against the loss of signification and the attachment to the whole being of, the desti of destiny. It is not and should not be compensation, reality that occurs afterwards, but rather primitive unity, prefaced to the development according to a unity. Art announces, introduces, or finishes, but does not realize. It is a deep inspiration and also the unit which begins and dedicates." End of quote. So the key concept here is the one of transduction, transduction that Simon Tony finds as the mode of unity of being through its diverse faces. For him, aesthetics does, do not unfold but operate horizontally and maintain the function of totality of a field of reality that tends to separate as it gets specialized. Aesthetic is, never, is therefore never determined, it's a tendency that holds the power of reticulation. Working in between, it makes the network of a field of reality visible and facilitates a transductive, transversal, or analogical expression of a phenomenon. Artist in, in this sense presents, makes visible the expressed virtual. It's a little bit like what Leighton says, you know, if this would be an event, it would be a folding of an event, and when you unfold the paper after, aesthetic would be the line of tendency that you have that occur within the event that is not true after, but that kind of marks the tendencies. So my participation in bio -art camp is therefore one that seeks to identify the transductive connections performed in order to keep the transductive unity of life. In Puissance du Temps, Variation de Bergson, David Lapoujal explains that for Bergson, attachment to life may take three forms. One, obedience, a commitment to a social group. Two, belief and attachment to a group or supernatural beings. And finally, three, creation or liberation, both derived from a commitment to the movement of life itself. While the first two qualify close societies and the creation of wealth reserved to humans, <coughs> The third form of attachment qualifies open systems and creates a universe, a universe open to a plurality of worlds. For Bergson, the first two are tendencies that circumscribe the circles where humans deploy their humanity and result from the same vital imperative, to conjure the depressing strength of intelligence, which slows down life's movement. The first two modes of attachment are therefore a form of vital depression. I think that the proliferation of biotechnology has brought a fourth form of attachment, a biological one, one that is situated at the intersection of closed and open systems, at the intersection of creation and depression. While a biological attachment to life might result in the production of closed systems reserved to biological entities, it also holds the potential to create universes that are open to a plurality of worlds. The distinction between these two modes of biological attachment is based on the understanding of biological life, namely the difference between an attachment to the movement of life itself as opposed to an attachment to the forms through which it passes, the difference between an immanence of spirit against the transcendence of intelligence. While Western world has been working towards eliminating religion as a transcendental, for transcendental force of becoming, bringing back a form of immanent appropriation, we have to be careful at making biotechnology a transcendental form that governs our attachment to life. The idea is therefore to develop a concept of life that is not based on a formalist or a substantialist conception, but on an immanent and spiritual processual relationality. This concept was for me brilliantly articulated by Gilbert Simondon, for whom life is a mode of relation. Life for him is not the form of individuation, nor is it a vital substance opposed to a physical one. Rather, life exists in relationality. In order to approach the inherent duality between the living and the non-living, he says, one must produce a topology of the living, namely an analysis of the mediating relations between milieus of interiority and milieus of exteriority. 
In this perspective, life is for him conditioned by its capacity to maintain a topological structure. In order to grasp the structure of life, he says, one must refuse to start with the organismic unity of complex organisms. Rather, the departure point should be found in the basic function that relies on the topological structure. He adds that life is not only characterized by mediating relations between the space of interiority and exteriority, it is also a theater of confrontation between an interior past and an exterior future. The reason why it's not only topological, but only chronological, also chronological, is that spatial coherence is broken by time. When the interior opens itself towards the outside, it opens itself to the indeterminate, to a futurity, to a changing potential. In this perspective, life really exists in relationality by maintaining its chronotopological structure. It would be correct here to see that life emerges from within, but is always in between. I find a great connection between Simondon's claim and Bayouard camp. By reconnecting the closed laboratory ecology with external ecologies, the project speculates on an ecological vision of our attachment to life in terms of chronotopological connection. <coughs> How does the opening up of a milieu of interiority, of a closed or sterile environment, of the lab, to an open, potentially infectious space, that is to a milieu of exteriority, to a space of indeterminacy, to a futurity, to a changing potential, affects or infects our attachment to life. Does the fact of bringing the lab out in the wild, or in nature, as I often heard last week, triggers the emergence of new modes of life and new modes of existence, or does it refine the great divide between nature and culture? How does the idea of bringing the lab into the field or into nature, as opposed to a museum or a city, facilitates our attachment to life? Does it also bring to the fore a biological conception of life? How does the camp facilitate a reconfiguration of our perception, attention, and attention, attachment to life? While Bioward camp seeks to bring the idea of a common, maybe a dirty common, as you mentioned this morning, a common between life, the laboratory, nature, the wild, the field, namely what we share on a living or biological point of view. We need to question the politics of this intertwinement. intertwinement. On the one hand, the, the topological connection between the lab and its outside sister, nature, might be a more Western construction. As for Whitehead, nature means the world, Nature means the world interpreted by reliance on clear and distinct sensory experiences, visual, auditory, and tactile. A sensory experience that is not reserved to humans. In this perspective, a laboratory would for him already be nature. I would like to conclude by saying that my project is a political project for life, and more precisely, cosmological one. According to Bruno Latour, cosmopolitics is the duty of the future, the only way to build the common dance. Isabel, and for Isabel Stengers, cosmopolitics is une oeuvre à faire, a process of construction of common wealth without any prior definition of neither the humankind nor of the various beings that compose it. My question is therefore the following. Did Bayouard camp enable us to construct a common wealth which recognizes life's non-biological mode of existence? Thank you. First of all, uh, I would really have to reread everything you said in order to completely absorb it. But the sort of, let's say, the impression I receive is also that you're talking about life as a cultural construct, in a sense, how you perceive the concept of life as a cultural connotation. And that's one of the things I was thinking about of setting the bio art camp in a setting like Banff. How about involving uh, people, say, from the uh, native Alberta First Nations people? Uh, because the way you talk about life, and we as scientists and people from Western backgrounds perceive it, is so completely different than well, I, First I, Nations would do, and the way they would interact with biological specimens and. and well, I think First Nations would probably agree a lot with what I say because they don't necessarily see life only in the bi biological materiality. 
So for a lot of native people, maybe not in Canada, maybe, you know, I would have to go do like real research on every cultural farms, but for lots of people, a rock is alive as much as you and me. So I think I'm trying to bring back a form of spirituality to life that has been removed from, from you know, the proliferation of biotechnology. So I don't think I exclude quite the contrary. I want to open the system to like considering like this building as living, and maybe considering that it's not me or the building that is living, but it's the relationship I share with the building. So this is where I bring the topological connection. So it's like life is in between things. I don't own my own life. I live because I, I share with you something. I share with the building, with the table, with my computer. Okay. Can I respond to that yeah. as well? Towards the end of my research, just as we were getting close to our camp, this also became ever present. This is another model for understanding the relationship between us and our ecology and the spectrum in the lab. And I felt that at that point, to just throw it in as a surface terse was, was inappropriate, but I, I do think it's something that needs to be further investigated as this line of, of inquiry is going to continue. Well, I'm just thinking for sort of perspectives and understanding, it's not from this sort of political correct idea that because we're here we need to involve uh, First Nations people. I don't think that's appropriate at all, but I'm more interested in, in how they would experience being involved in, in things like this and, and how they, you know, relate to just the biological. As part of the research, I started going through different texts and I arrived at Tony Snow, which is a sex show, which is a, a, a native leader who writes about this land. And he uses a completely different language set than the other language sets that I have come across that expresses some of this uh, moment that you're talking about. Um, and so I think that it is, some, again, I found this two months before by our campaign. Yeah. So I believe really this is something that we can explore more in the future. So food and rich food. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I have a question for you, Mary. Um, are you talking about a form of vitalism as a possibility or maybe more of a organicism? Neither, I think. Okay. I think it's more Vitalism it would mean that there is a force that is driving. Yes, that's right. You know? Yeah. And Whereas in organicism is kind of often more uh, <coughs> uh, uh, an interest in sort of uh, emergent and eruptive energy and properties that comes from that. Yeah, but organicism also means kind of that can't you start with a unity of existence mm -hmm. that doesn't necessarily open up to other, you know, that makes a clear boundary. And I think the topological thing negates this idea of having like the real organism. You know, because you want to open it to other realities. So you should not start by like, the organism point of view, because there you start with an identity that doesn't necessarily include relation, that, you know, negates some forms of relationalities, yeah. Great. Have you been able to identify any particular bioorganism that you can really open Oh, I think it's there a lot of the interviews I did. It was especially present in the discussion I had with Kurt and Angus yesterday. Um, but you know, there's so much stuff there. I need to re do, go back, <laughs> listen, and maybe Skype again with some of the people, you know? Because also, they didn't know what my take was on it. So now that they know it, maybe some of their answers will change. <laughs>